But I mean, you know, there are things that you can. There are things that you. But that's not that's not honoring your wife for one thing. That's not helping your wife. And and you know, those are the kind of amends you don't you don't need to make. You need to make them to your father, but you don't. You know, you don't need to do that. You don't. Well, honey, I was looking at that beautiful girl because she's so much better looking than you, you know, but, you know, <laughs> you know it, that's, you know. So, let's go on to 10. Out of college. Which, yeah. Are we still in the... Uh, well, we just, we just, we just the the completed the Amen Corner. We just completed the Amen Corner. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, tell them, uh, so this is after, so we've done our, we, we've, for the day, we've taken a good, we We've gone through the steps yeah. what we, for that day. Tell us where we're going now, where we're heading well, now. We have to be on the continuing, continuing lookout for our own transgression. Uh, we're, the evil one is always in our ear, yeah. always there, always ready to jump on us. And we, if, we, if we become a victim of that, we now have to make sure we catch that in our personal inventory. And when we're wrong, we promptly admit it. Uh, so I, I, this is a, like a, a constant never-ending police patrol, watching, watching out for bad stuff going on, and, and, and then getting rid of it as soon as you can. And then, and it makes it a lot easier. Oh yeah. If you get rid of it when you do it, if you go right back to that person and say, "Man, I dropped the ball," or you go to your daughter or your your son and say, "Hey, you know, man, you know, Dad dropped the ball on this. I'm really sorry." Yeah, I handled that poorly. I shouldn't have done it that way. Here's what I should have done. So. Yeah. Uh, and that just and what that get, gains you in those, in those instances is a tremendous amount of respect from your son and your daughter. Because they're saying, what I think the ambition that I have had, and I, I know Jordan is the same way, is to have your little girl say, someday say to you when she's at the right age, I want to marry a man like my dad. Or if I have a son who says, well, I wish I could be like my dad, I, I know I can be. Uh, that's, such a, that's such a compliment to Jesus. Because that's what happened to you. It wasn't that you did it, but you became available to do it too, do it with. So we don't talk about the excellence of you, we talk about the excellence of Jesus. Amen. And that's where we go into buoy 11. This is also a, a spiritual awareness. This, this is it. I've sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with the Lord, praying knowledge for his will for me and the power to carry that out. I mean, that has to, you got to do a step 11 each day. You know, that's what you're doing in your quiet time is, you know, you're praying for that, you know, to improve your conscious contact with God. And that's what you guys, especially you Top Gun 2 guys, I mean, you know, the, you've achieved, you're, you're working towards that on a daily basis and, and you're becoming the leaders of this. And you're becoming the leaders of this. So, you know, you want to, um, to continue to go there. So then we go to 12 and 12 is, is a biggie too. I've had a spiritual awakening as a result of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and this voyage to the safe harbor. I'll try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all these areas. Yep. I mean, obviously we all are, are, are in the business of carrying the message to other people. If, if nothing, the least you can do is always be the man of honor, integrity, and truth as you deal with everybody. And I, I think that's a goal we all have. And if, if, we, if the goal is reached also that you cannot take it with the close of your life to stand faultless before the throne, then these 12 steps help you do it, 12 buoys. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful because that would be, that's my wish and my prayer. And you speak of uh, the honor, integrity, and truth, and you all see uh, my class and my brother's wearing the Hitman and the Hitman shirt. Tell them how Hitman came about. and, and uh, where all that came from? Well, the Hitman started a number of years ago uh, because my wife and I were invited by our children to a, a family reunion celebration for birthdays and for anniversaries and so on. So before we went there, Kathy and I made a, a, a video disc of, uh, of, of telling a story of our lives. And also I made a thing called Hitman, which was an accountability. And what I was saying to it originally was, to my children, here is the man I want to be, kids. If you see I'm not being this, tell me, because I want to know. So it was my accountability to my children and how I stood on certain issues and how I felt about certain issues. And they all said, okay, can we become hit by also? And yes, they can, <laughs> and which they did. Uh, and now we have Hitman as a thing that a number of us have joined in as an accountability for ourselves, so we, we 
we ad adhere to certain principles in our lives, honor, integrity, and truth. It doesn't cover all issues in your life, but it gives them very good guidelines for you. Uh, that, are you already on that? What we did was um, we went and we brought our families in. It was sort of like that movie that you saw, but you know, my the, the shirt that I got doesn't fit. I don't know why. No but kidding. <laughs> but, I had, but I had my name on it, and, um, and my wife said that, uh, you know, I told my wife, I said, she can wear it. And she said, it has your name on it. I said, yes, but you can tell it Jordan is your hit name. And basically what it is is that we have told our families, and through Paul and, and Javier's handing it out now, we've told our family that these are the um, – these are the things in life that we are striving to be. You know, we're never going to be perfect at it. But we, we framed them, we signed them, and we gave them to our families, and we said, this is the man we want to be. We want to be a man of honor. We want to be a man of integrity. We want to be a man of truth. And, um, and so we gave our families permission, our wives and our families permission, to tell us when we weren't being those hit men. To be able to say, hey, you know, where's my hitman? So, and some of them put them up on the in their their homes, and and um, and Paul really just started talking about being a hitman, and then we saw the logo sort of came out of it because in the logo you'll see that it has the Bible is the truth, and and the swords is the um, and the, the the shield of. Anyway, it has all those stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I had it made and I forgot it, but. But so the, the hitman thing is, is something that we chose to do. And, um, you know, we thought about bringing it to the church. You know, Pastor Jonathan said something about, you know, hitman doesn't sound too good because, you know, you're not. Not as good as Top Gun. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the other thing, too, is that um, you'll notice there's a section in there in regards in regard to women because I have daughters and a wife who also are interested in doing this and they're signing on the same way. So I sort of define what I, what I felt. That's my opinion, though of what women bring to the world. To bring to the language. So we gave you all the slides. You'll see that uh, we didn't, we just sort of went through the uh, introductions. We didn't read them for, you know, um, but in the bottom of it, it said the strategies for the journey, journey is as Paul brought up before. Well, first on the conclusion, it says there's, um, there's no time required. You don't have to, yeah, you just, there's no time requirement. When you decide to cast off, begin, and we wish you bon voyage. Um, if you're hesitant, you know, you can contact me or Paul. But the strategies, it says, you know, feel free to go back and pray or meditate at the previous movie. And I'll tell you, you know, you're going to be going back and forth. It's like Paul said when he was on that island. You know, every time he went to the mainland, he had to go through the channel. He had to go through the buoy. So every time in life, every situation in your life, you may have to run it against your markers of life. You may have to, you know, hopefully you're not going to have to do one, two, or three ever again. But that corner... You'll be doing a lot. <laughs> a lot in the corner. Hey, uh, Amen. If you need help, on, if you need help in, in navigation of the voyage, the great pilot, who is your Holy Spirit that's with you, is always ready to take the wheel and steer you away from rocks or, or reefs. Go ahead, Eddie. Uh, can we go back to Feel Free, buoy number seven? That's where you talked in depth about the banana split. Can you go a little deeper into the banana split, please? Yes. Anyway, go back to the uh, strategies for your journey. If you need help in navigation and avoidance, a great pilot who's always ready to take the wheel and steer you away from the rocks and reefs. You know, when things get crazy, you can always just say, God, I'm done. You know, help me. You know, uh, we had, I had a God box at home that, that I used to write out stuff that a problem and I put it in the guide box and I say, okay, God, it's yours. And then when we start talking about it and stuff and I start went worrying about it, my wife would say, hey, 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 go in the guide box. Take it back out because you're, you've decided to take it and take it on for yourself instead of leaving it to him. So, you know, we got to let the Holy Spirit run. It says go slowly. We don't want to cause any damage in our wake and we've discussed that. And we want to keep in mind that there'll be great joy in the safe harbor when Jesus calls you home. Now, since I am the, the guy in charge of all the time and stuff, our time is up. And I'm not going to go over my time, but I will ask if we have a question. Yeah, and just when um, you were talking, and it was um, so important to me, your, your session, because you said, 
we do this class, we do this session, we do these things, we're not going to be doing these all our lives. I mean, we might do little classes here and there, but how intense this past nine months has been. Um, and this is a, a good tool to keep on and, and, and get those close knit guys and keep them next to you. And I just, it's a good, I mean, I, I think, I think it, it, you guys have kind of give us as, as much as you can in the little times you have. But I think it's, it's, it's good to have a nice and solid outlook. Because recovery, to me, I mean, I, I thought about maybe doing recovery and stuff, but I was like, ah, oh, maybe I don't need that and stuff. I feel good. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, but it, it's just those steps are important. And, and if you could take that and just make it, I don't know. Well, what Andrea said, Paul, I, I don't know this for sure, but that ferry you always took, was there just one guy always running the ferry? He did everything himself, or did he have other men with him working on the ferry? Oh, he had a crew of men that were accountable to him. Yeah, the guy was just and, captain. He, and he was accountable because he had to get the ship to safe harbor. And that's, that's the situation with us. Um, this, this is a lifelong journey. Uh, those 12 steps of my life, I had to make them. I couldn't. If I had been able to continue to go to AA meetings, I don't know, on the island, I don't know whether I would have been thrust into the need to say, I've got to make these steps. Not something that I do or take or work with, but they had to be my life. What about I pick up a drink? Now, I lived on that island between 20 and 30 years. Uh, if I, from the day I left the island, if I went around and knocked on doors and asked the people, do you think I'm an alcoholic? They say, no, boy, you don't even drink. But what I had to know was that. Because that's what, that's what, my, that's what got me started on the transformation. I wasn't going to call all of that a lie. And I'll give you one fast, fast example. My youngest sons who both were born after I got sober. And I would say to you, when I picked up those little babies in my own, I had the first idea of what unconditional love was. Bonnie knew what that was. When one of them graduated from college, he had played two sports out of uh, the uh, uh, soccer and lacrosse. Both his coaches came to me, no, no one played these sports for four years, and he's the only fellow we ever had who never, ever missed a practice. He was here sick, or injured, or whatever. He was always here. And so I said to Norman one day after that, what, what ever gave you that, that, no, that the discipline? He said, from watching you, Dad, wow. I mean, the tears were running down my face on that one because I was a guy who was a disaster. I mean, I, I was a liar, a cheap thief. Um, and those words can be converted into your own life. I don't mean lying that puts you in jail, but lies to your wife, your children, uh, uh, cheating you yourself. Cheat. Cheating, you know, certainly yourself. Cheating uh, uh, because you're not, you're not around the family that much, or, or you're doing other things other than taking care of them. Um, so there's there's all sorts of, and it's the same way with stealing. It doesn't have to be money out of somebody's uh, um, money box. That certainly was me, but it wasn't other people. Um, but it certainly could be stealing time from your family. So those are those are those are things that you have to keep yourself militarily involved. I mean, you have to be almost military and make yourself do it. Do it every day. Um, but when Norman said that to me, I said, thank God, well, you did this for me. What a miracle. And that's what, that's, so if you look at me and you look at anybody who has used these steps to get to a point in life where they can say, wow, I am a man of honor and integrity and truth and I didn't do it. I just became one of them and, and the Lord took me there. That's the miracle. Uh, so and that's with your band of brothers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.